Hello, fellow travelers and those interested in traveling more. If you're new here, welcome to my channel, where my motto is, come with me if you want to live. And if you're returning, welcome back. So this is my third and final installment of my three-part series of Berlin, a trip I took in May of this year. In part one, I spent the first 28 hours solo, where I immersed in the techno culture through techno painting, did a photo shoot with a local photographer, and explored the historic neighborhood of Miet, which is home to many of Berlin's most famous sites. In part two, I was joined by my friend, where we checked out the nightlife, as well as other major attractions like the Disgusting Food Museum, Checkpoint Charlie, Atella Disco, Oberbaum Bridge, and we had dinner in the revolving restaurant of the Berlin TV Tower. So due to the late night out and my jet lag kicking in, I actually didn't start my Sunday until about 1 p.m., which is crazy considering I'm usually an early bird, especially when I'm traveling because I like to make the most of my experience and do as much as possible. So on day four, since it was a Sunday, I wanted to check out Mauer Park, which is famous for a Sunday flea market. But before that, next to the park, I wanted to check out this really famous, highly rated kebab shop called Mauer Kebab for my first meal of the day. This was only the second kebab I had during my trip. I mentioned another kebab shop in part one, but I must tell you, Mauer Kebab blew them out of the water. I mean, no offense to the first place though. But look at these reviews. So yeah, it was delicious. I highly recommend it. And if you have only one kebab spot to visit, make it Mauer Kebab. I ran out of cash, so I had to go hit the ATM and... But actually, this is stupid. Also, travel tip, whenever you're using a foreign ATM, always decline the conversion because you will always pay more if you let the ATM convert for you. Also, they're not a sponsor, but shout out to Charles Schwab. I have a checking account with them, which reimburses all of my ATM fees, so I ended up paying even less. So I just finished up at Mauer Park Flea Market, somewhere behind me. I stopped here for a little drink, Moscow Mules. And I brought some attire for tonight's raving activities. Ooh, yes. Those weird earrings. I'll probably never wear them again, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. For dinner, we found this really great Indian spot. And I know what you might be thinking, why would you have Indian food in Germany? Well, through my research, I learned that Germany or specifically Berlin is very well known for their Asian food as well. And I think Indian food definitely fits into that category. And I actually did check out another Asian spot later on in this video, so stay tuned for that. So our major plan while being in Berlin was to check out the techno scene, do some clubbing, specifically to try to get into arguably the most exclusive club in the world. Bergheim. Bergheim in Berlin. This is Bergheim. The world's most exclusive club. This club in Germany rejects 60% of the people in line every night. So I took a quick snap outside of the club and that's the only photo I have because as you can see, this club is notoriously hard to get into. And there are many unspoken rules if you want to get in such as not taking pictures or selfies while in line, not talking too much or too loudly, being obnoxious, 
or drunk. Oh, and the dress code. Everyone was in black. Also, the more casual slash eccentric, the better. So no club dresses or heels or looking too clean or like you care too much about your appearance. I hear it also helps to know a little German and to know what DJ is playing that night. I knew neither. Also, the line is notoriously long. Some people wait two to three hours, but I went on a Sunday night and I got to the door in just 10 minutes, which is great because I was not prepared to wait any longer than like 30, 45 minutes tops. So when we finally got towards the front, first we watched the bouncers turn a group of people away with no explanation and I tensed up. After the bouncer reviewed our IDs, it was the moment of truth. And we made it. Once you get in, you pay 25 euros per person and they cover the cameras on your phone with stickers. Now don't get caught taking the stickers off or taking photos and videos because you will get kicked out. All right, so this is what I ended up wearing when I got into Burgine last night. I bought this at the flea market, thinking that we would go to, um, I think a club called Sisyphos, which is more colorful and vibrant. Um, so I threw that on top of like all this black. And I was like, well, if we don't get into Burgine, I'll just like use this, <laughs> try to get to another club. But um, yeah, same for these earrings. I got them at the flea market as well. It's kind of matched with this. As you can see, I just look like, just very eccentric <laughs> and uh, I think it just your vibe matters more than what you wear they say um, but you know I, I got my hair done I did my hair specifically with the colors expecting to go clubbing and stuff um, the black shoes and the fishnets and the leather very typical Burgine like everyone standing in line was wearing all black and in fact um, yeah my friend and I were like the most colorful I had this and um, he was wearing like a red Hawaiian shirt and I let him borrow like one earring, like one big earring. It was just like a crazy mess. Um, but yeah, looks great. And then also my theft proof bag. Beware of pickpockets. So, you know, have my theft proof bag where you can hook the zipper, hook these onto the hook here so people cannot easily get into the bag. Um, but yeah, it's my outfit. We've reached day five, my final day in Berlin, and I'm once again solo since my friend boarded its flight early that morning. So of course I took it upon myself to book another Airbnb experience. Honestly, Airbnb should just sponsor me at this point. Wink, wink. <laughs> so to close out this Berlin trip, I booked a DJing workshop, which is another cool way to celebrate the techno culture of Berlin if you're not into clubbing. So unfortunately, I'm not going to play the audio from the actual session because I don't want to get stuck with a copyright violation from YouTube. So if you do want to check it out, you can go to my Instagram story highlights, uh, Berlin number two. All right, I just finished my little DJ session here with Aida. And Yay! she gave us candies, these yes, German candies. They did so great. Thank so you that so was much. some really amazing transitions and the music choice. And, oh yeah, no, uh, the sets she had are amazing. I love them. <laughs> I'm gonna look into it. I and really great energy as a DJ also. It's uh, it's all about the energy, what you put out to the people, to the world. And uh, yeah, you have like really nice uh, energy oh, around you. Thank you. you. So. <laughs> oh, thank you. So do you. <laughs> Definitely um, keep up with the DJ yes, we'll and try. with music. We'll try. I'll buy a five thousand dollar <laughs> <laughs> equipment. Oh, and here are the studios. I was in Studio Six.
For lunch, I actually ended up meeting with another travel creator with whom I'd connected online a few months prior, Kiana, aka Wonderfully You, on Instagram. She's an American living in Berlin who'd given me tons of tips about Berlin before I came, so I was so excited to meet her. Sadly, I don't have any photos or videos with her because I was too shy to ask. But you should definitely check out her page, especially if you're visiting Berlin or Germany, or if you're a creator who's interested in learning how to score brand deals or hotel collaborations. So we met up at this Taiwanese noodle shop, which was absolutely amazing. Again, the Asian food in Berlin is a must. Also on the street were several other really popular Asian spots, including this really interesting Japanese restaurant across the street. So inside this building is a very Nice Japanese restaurant. Finally, Kiana recommended I check out Holtz Market near my hotel before I headed to my flight home. It has cute crafty shops, a cafe, and nice outdoor seating area, as well as another teledisco, which looks much cleaner than that green one. If you're confused about what I'm talking about, Check out my part two video. We have here another cleaner teledisco. All right, my Berlin trip has come to an end. I'm so sad, like I love it here. I don't say that often. I mean, I might say it often, but I don't mean it that way. I, I really, really mean it. Like I have to come back and I can see myself living here for sure. Um, yeah, so Berlin, my favorite European city, hands down. Um, yeah, on my way back to the hotel now to pick up my bags take one last look at the uh, TV tower in the distance. Mm -hmm. Now ends my journey. Well, I hope you've enjoyed following along. If you enjoyed my video, please like and subscribe for more. I have a lot more travel content coming out very soon. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok at WhimsicallyBrit. And if you prefer to read, you can check out my travel blog at WhimsicallyBrit.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.